Hello, everybody. Guess what map we're back on? Yes, indeed. It is Sirtis Major. You guessed correctly. And it's Mr. Mackey versus TA for Life. And the reason why we're back here on Sirtis is because this is the best replay that was sent to me. So, uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at it. I guess there weren't really many good games played because I was really struggling to find them. So I even tried to resort to older replays from a while ago and then they didn't even load. So so we're here. Sirtis Major, Mr. Mackey, TA for Life, Cybern on UEF. And TA for Life has been probably the most active player on the latter in recent weeks. So he's been playing plenty of games and see how he does here against my clan mate. Mr. Mackey, Mr. Mackey, uh, screwing up here, trying to just get his mexes up. He's going to go three mexes, then Hydro, TA for life, going for the Zoc build or something. I don't know if this is the Zoc build or the TA for life build or whatever, but not going for the Hydro with his ACU. He's going to sit here and reclaim the rocks, make some power, and then go for two factories on the ledge. Obviously the ledge, best place for factories early on, so you must do this trick as you can support this area. Also attack the middle, see how the early game develops, second air from both of them. And Mr. Mackey keeping his ACU put for the moment and then he's going to go and erect the factories to, it seems to be the new meta, two factories instead of just one, we're going to see early air scout from Mackey followed by interceptor. TF Life actually still getting his factory and he's going for first bomber so he'll be behind in terms of air control unless he can make this count. He's going to go for the aggressive route. Scouts from both players. Actually TA scouting both sides making sure that nothing surprises him. Good intel from him and two factories on the ledge. Bomber out. Scout to follow and Mackey might have actually just seen the bomber. Uh, he actually didn't. The bomber will come in, but it will have nothing to kill. It will be spotted now by the scout, and the patrolling interceptor should actually grab that. Yes, it does. So that should put TA far behind. Well, not far behind, but at least behind in air control. He's, he hasn't actually got any interceptors on the field. Mackie has two. Three now. So three to one definite air control for Mackie. And so he can start to expand as much as he wants. He's actually also had an expansion, so the early game you could say has gone for Mackey. TA uh, going to the middle, Mackey the same thing. Looks like it's pretty close between those two in terms of getting to the middle, and TA manages to defend there by the skin of his teeth. Keeps his engineer alive, but this one will not survive. Nothing to protect it. So that engineer falls. TA is actually going to stop and construct an anti-air turret on his way to the middle. Both players already have their artilleries there trying to knock down the T1 PDs. And then get the quantum gate wreck. Very important. Apparently Mackie wants to make full use of his air coming out with a jester now. Recognizes that he has air control. He's going to start harassing TA's structures. And in come the interceptors from TA. Actually now TA has air control. Or does he? Yeah, he has slightly more. I think the fact that he was targeting the Jester might give Mackie an advantage here. This is very, very close. And still very even, the air fight here. Mackie's still continuing to raid, so he's playing this early game fairly well. But TA is in the middle, shooting the Quantum Gate. It'll take forever to kill like that. It'll take 100 seconds. So nearly two minutes if you're just shooting with the ACU. Obviously, if both are shooting, that'll take a minute. And some artillery would greatly speed that up. And TA appears to have more land units on the field early on. He's going to have to make that count. He can raid on the bottom. As long as he holds on the top, he should be solid in that regard. I'm going for tech 2 land at the seventh minute. And I know that a characteristic move of TA on this map is to get cruise missiles, so he will want to control the middle in order to make that happen. And Mackie has just retreated, allowing TA to completely take control of the quantum gate. 
it's uh, questionable for Mackey's maybe the first mistake he's going to make because TA is now just hoovering up match for free. Not sure what was happening there. He's already reclaimed more than half of the wreck. Mackey still not reclaiming. It's, that will uh, about 2,600 reclaimed for Mackey, 6,000 for TA. That will certainly go a long way to repairing the deficit that TA had. You can see now he's soaring ahead, at least in the score. That's what happens when you get a big chunk of reclaim. But Mackey still raiding nicely. He's got these units in various locations, making it difficult to kill all of them, but a raid comes in from TA. Looks like he will have enough to do some significant damage here. As long as he keeps his units together, he should pack a considerable punch there. TA actually not trying to control the middle, but he is going for cruise missiles nonetheless. Will be able to hit a lot of mechs on Mackey's side. He hasn't scouted Mackey at all, curiously enough. And T2 land coming up from Mackey as well. And this force needs to start raiding soon. Otherwise, this will just be mass gifted by TA. And more jesters from Mackey. Actually, two jesters from him. Trying to do a considerable amount of harassment. But once again, his units are unattended. And TA really going for the Tech 2 spam now. He's got three Tech 2 factories up. He will certainly be trying to get as many units on the field as possible, getting TMD up. And Mackey obviously is well aware that TA likes his cruise missiles, so he will be getting TMD. And more jesters. He just continues to try and use these jesters to control certain areas of the map. And he's got this radar here, kind of vulnerable, but it is nicely placed. And T2 air from Mackey. There it is. Going for some renegades. Should really help against the tech one spam, especially if it bunches up the way it is at the moment. Renegade could absolutely devastate those tanks over there. TA is going to have to start making more air if he wants to combat this gunship presence from Mackey. And all this, so many pillars from TA can easily make a big push here if he can snipe those gunships be very good for him uh, actually he's gonna start to push into the middle trying to take control there surprisingly few units from Mackey there he's got a radar so he'll know if there's anything coming his way yeah, these gunships from Mackey just being extremely bold all of the air from TA is down here so these gunships can have free reign to do whatever they want and uh, transports coming up from TA as well wants to make his units a little bit more mobile and here comes the air force from TA will take out these gunships with few problems and T2 flag will also nullify the gunship threat a little bit actually it will nullify the gunship threat so Mackie will have to find another solution and at the moment he is also going for a heavy tech 2 spam himself so we will see large numbers of tech 2 units collide on the field T1 transport is out and operating right under Mackey's nose so a bit of good fortune there for TA and he's finally starting to put more uh, build power on his air spam so that he can start to compete Mackey way ahead in mass I suspect no TA is not actually stalling on power so this is a real advantage for Mackey 75 mass to just 42 Although he's allowing units into the back of his base will be quite annoying to deal with but he's got gunships so It is a very good way to defend against these small raids with gunships because they are very mobile being air units And TA has got six missiles in the clip here about to have seven if he could snipe these TMDs with something He could unleash hell onto Mackey's base but he needs to find a way to actually snipe that first. Looks like he's got quite a bit of mass in the tank as he's able to construct these missiles quite quickly. And TA just still being harassed by these gunships. Must be pretty annoying. And stealth fields from Mackey, so it could be a planning some kind of stealth operation. And still just tech 2 land from both players. Neither one wants to make the move to Tech 3 yet. Just took Tech 2 land all over the place for Mackey. 
not got enough mass to support that, unfortunately. TA does have quite a bit of mass. He's reclaimed 18,000. Mackie just around 10,000. So TA still holds on to that reclaim advantage from the beginning of the game, allowing him to stay in the race. And actually now he's got more mass income than Mackie does. So Mackie's starting to lose a little bit of ground. He did go for a huge tech to spam. He should, for the moment, at least have more, so he could start to push, especially down here with his ACU, he can make a big push. And if you were to just make an army out of all these units, he could seriously push TA back, but the more he waits, the more he allows TA to catch up. See, lots of build power on the tech 2 from TA. So. It's just going to be about whether or not Mackie moves in time. He's got all these units in the back here. If he grabbed all these units and pushed, he would be able to easily take over the top. He's got definitely enough to hold off TA down here, although drops are going to be quite annoying. Dropping his Tech 1 units in the back here. more units falling or more maxes falling from Mackie so the economic gap will continue to swing more into TA's favor. And here come the units from Mackie just going to the middle. I guess pushing up the middle would also be viable but TA is going for tech 3 land and we've seen that he has uh, lots of build power on that and if he starts to get Percival's up it's going to be very, very hard for a Cybern player to deal with that because Percival's are essentially the ultimate Tech 3 unit. Nearly impossible to deal with them if you're talking about even numbers. Pound for pound, they will demolish any other unit in the game. But this will give Mackie an even greater window where he will have more Tech 2 units as TA is going for Tech 3. But the Percival spam is now underway. More power and more mass for TA. As long as he can keep his mass bar somewhat balanced, he will be able to shit out these Percivals really quickly. And once you get a group of three or four Percivals, it becomes very, very difficult to deal with. And uh, just still Tech 2 Air, Tech 2 Land from Mackie. Looks like TA's efforts will be concentrated on the bottom. He's got the gun upgrade and tech 2, so that will allow him to hold down the top very well just with his ACU, in fact. So he can put all his effort into the bottom, shields and percivals. This is an ideal tech 2 or tech 3 UEF force. See, they actually, he's just firing at range. He's able to demolish Mackie's units from a distance. And Mackie's going to push in here, a mistake from him. This is just going to be a mass gift. You can see the engineers in the area. This has no chance for Mackie. And it's just going to be more mass for TA to convert into more Percivals. And TA just continues to pull ahead in power as well, holding off Mackie on the top. So you have to say TA is sitting in a very nice position. Looks like his TML launcher was actually destroyed. It's actually quite annoying. I think that thing was loaded. <coughs> mm. And, uh, yeah, it looks like TA's force here is just starting to gather momentum. He can easily smash through. He's got two Percivals, and I would assume more incoming. Nope, just the two. The rest of them are going to gather in the middle. But even with two Percivals, he can easily push Mackie back and take over the bottom. The engineers in the back are just ready to instantly reclaim any mass that might become available and he's running away. This is what we saw from Lextok running away from a single Cerberus turret. And TA for some reason has lost his forces on the top. He's got to retreat. Until his Percivals get into the area now he's pretty secure. These Percivals will be almost impossible for Mackie to push in but Bricks are being produced and bricks are definitely the units that have the best chance of stopping Percivals. The problem would be if he was Aeon or Seraphim, the Percivals would easily dominate, but against bricks it's a little bit more difficult. And Mackie starting to catch up in power. And going for Tech 3 Mexes as well. Doesn't have any yet. 
TA actually not really ecoing that hard, just surrounding his uh, mechs with storage once he wants to upgrade into tech 3. You can see this one going to tech 3 now. So going for the less investment route, lower investment because it obviously takes mass to surround your T2 mechs. But that can also be quite beneficial, so we see two different styles here in terms of eco. And Mackie going for Corsairs, we might be seeing a snipe in the making here. TA has a shield and 15,000 health, so it won't be easy to snipe him, but certainly with a large group of Corsairs it's possible. And Mackie just trying to use his bricks at range here, but the Percivals will fire back, and with shields and numbers, this is uh, going to be a success for TA, you would feel. But it's going to be a sandwiching maneuver from Mackie. He's going to run in now with his large Rhino Force. And with these types of overwhelming numbers, uh, I think the Percivals will struggle. But with all this pillar support, they should also be okay. Tech 1 PD is also in the mix. See, only one Percival lost there for TA. And really not much to say there. It was kind of an even fight. Uh, these bricks make a mistake here running in by themselves they will get overwhelmed by the numbers of the Percivals and those are two kills for free not ideal for Mackie and look at the build power on this Percival factory from TA and lots of T2 gunships as well this is reminiscent of how Blackheart used to play this game a year ago or two years ago lots of Percivals and lots of stingers and still the Corsair spam continues from Mackie. He's got quite a few on the field. How many is this? He's got 11 Corsairs. And I think he's got enough interceptors to claim air control. Actually, he's definitely got enough. And he's letting his units free again. TA with 50 interceptors in the area. Mackie with 74, so he's definitely got more. I <laughs> see an epic interceptor fight here and I think Mackie will easily come out on top in this one he's gonna have these Corsairs which will ravage tech, tech 2 and tech 3 units on the field from TA Mackie actually now surpassing TA in power so the eco remains very very even and TA still being very conservative in terms of surrounding his maxes and the Corsairs come in, they could devastate the build power here for TA. And this is, this is actually a very good situation for TA. You can see he's got mass in the tank while producing these Percivals, so he's not even stalling. And now Tech 3 anti-air on the way for TA. And that will start to demolish the Tech 2 air units from Mackie. So with enough of these, TA will have significant protection from air. I'm not here to pass judgment, I'm just going to report the facts, and that's the facts are that these Tech 3 anti-air turrets, or these mobile things are a bit too strong for my liking, so I guess I, j I did just pass judgment, but the fact is that they are very, very good. And continue to see this air fight just continue, and Mackie will clean up again, although these how much range do these little shits have? Quite a bit of range. So they're going to contribute to the air fight even from back there. Yep, there goes the fire. Eight kills already. These things will absolutely demolish Tech 1 air. We've got a spider bot coming up. Looks like it's just the one Tech 3 engineer working on it from Mackie. And I'm not sure how good a spider bot will be against all these Percivals, but with brick support, could be quite good. At least as a tank. Although spiders are pretty poor tanks, at least they have more health than bricks. And while the Percivals would be occupied with the spider, you'd imagine Mackie's bricks would do good work. And does he actually have Rass? No, he doesn't. But he does have Tech 3 Air going for the Whalers. So this is going to be basically full on Tech 3 land versus Tech 3 Air. Interesting things are happening. Let's check the reclaim again TA 44,000. Mackie 45,000, so the reclaim is exactly even. This game is about as even as you could want. 
And Mackie cleans up air once again. And Tech 3 gunship should be able to do some good work under fire from Tech 3 mobile anti-air. What was that? Maybe some bugging going on, but that one was weakened anyway, so it goes down quite easily. Uh, this is interesting. We see the Stingers actually using their transport capabilities, so TA using his units to their full potential. And a good old-fashioned flag against this gunship. You can see how well it's doing. No need for this new fangled Tech 3 air, anti-air shit. See, Tech 2 flag does the job. And the Tech 3 gunships now laying waste to these Percivals that do not have anti-air presence. Tech 2 radar from TA. Desu is all the way back at the base. Doesn't want to take any chance with the whalers on the field, of course. Here comes the Tech 3 anti-air. This is quite fun. And TA just trying to push as much as he can. So he knows that while Mackie is putting so much into Tech 3 air, he will surely have a Tech 3 land advantage over Mackie. Looks like power problems for Mackie. And this is a catastrophe for him. TA is going to push three or two different expansions here, and this one is certainly lost. You can see all the Tech, three gun tech 2 gunships from TA. And the Percivals are going to demolish this expansion as well. So Mackie is down to just his main base, it seems. TA has much more control over his side than Mackie has over his own side. But these Percivals are being cornered. They can't go anywhere. And Mackie can make a significant push here. So it's not over by any stretch of the imagination. 13 bricks on top here for Mackie. And not a single Percival to defend. This will get run over if Mackie pushes in. These gun, these Percivals are incapacitated here on the edge. All that gunship just got demolished by two Tech 3 anti-airs. So they're coming in again. Quite a lot of damage being done with each volley. There goes the Tech 3 gunship. I was against these Tech 3 anti-airs, and I still am. And the spider is about to complete... And if he gives it some kind of support, it could do well with eliminating one of these threats. But Mackie has to push back now. He can easily run over this area with his with his bricks and go up here. And he can use his spider to defend his base there and his brick span to defend the bottom. But the bottom line is he's got to make a push on the top. He can't let TA recover because if that happens, TA has a huge advantage. TA with 11,000 power, much more than what Mackie has, so the eco continues to expand from TA, but Mackie does have this spider, we'll see what he can do with it. TA is going to seize the opportunity. This is be a bit more assertive than Mackie was. Mackie had the opportunity to push up here. TA will take the first opportunity to push into Mackie's base. And Mackie, I don't, he doesn't want to use his ACU here, this could be bad. Good overcharge there good overcharge again so maybe he does I think he actually has the stealth upgrade so TA is gonna struggle to target him it's a good play for Mackie take it back he he was right to use his ACU there and just gonna leave a bunch of mass for him to reclaim bricks are also gonna do well to clean up that and he is making a push up here the main issue though is that the spider cannot deal with all this on its own he's got to reunite it with his main force and make a big push ASF's in big production from TA. And a very successful pushback from Mac. He's going to reclaim quite a bit. And he's going to start making strap bombers. So obviously stealth strap bombers are a big possibility. And finally the push that I was crying out for five minutes ago is happening. Mackie is going to push in. And if he pushes all the way he can take out all these T2 maxes. Would be quite profitable for him. In fact if he did that he'd be ahead in economy. So... He's got to make that happen as soon as possible. Even a single brick pushing in here would would do quite a bit of damage if he doesn't want to risk his whole force. And TA just continues to make Tech 3 mechs. Mackie already has upgraded quite a few of those. So at least four. And now five. No, it actually hasn't gone to Tech 3 yet. Five, yeah, that one has. So one single strap bomber on the field for Mackie. His spider has gone all the way to the bottom, so... 
Yeah, the spider pushed back the invading forces, but aside from that, it hasn't done much as we approach the 39th minute. So this game is slightly different than what we saw between Zuck and Lextark. That one was a lot more aggressive. Players were throwing everything at each other immediately. This has been a little bit more cat and mouse, a few more tactical moves. And Mackie looks like he'll be using his spider to hunt down these units. These units are really not in a good spot. They can't go anywhere and the spider can easily catch up to them, so... It could be a big win for Mackie here on the bottom and a lot of reclaim will go to him as we see the spider go to work. 45 kills for it. And if this spider can gain a few levels of veterancy and gain more HP, it could be a big unit in terms of attacking up here. The only problem with the spider is how little health it has. If it gets some veterancy, as you can see, it's already up to 60,000 health. If it just gets a little bit more veterancy, say up to 80,000 health or so, I don't know how many veterancy levels it actually has so far. It has three. So if it were to go to 80,000 health or so, it could be very, very effective up here. And TA really is restricted in terms of his end game options because he's got the Percival spam, which you could argue is strong enough by itself. But fat boys are not really that great. And in terms of air, he could make broadswords, but I think the main the main issue here is keeping air control, so uh, ASFs are more valuable. So Mackie definitely has more options going into the end game. Let's see what he chooses. Just making strat bombers at the moment. Three. And TA going for some T2 transports. In fact, he could be making Tech 3 transports if he wanted. Get some extra security. And what is he making here? Could be shield. Yes, it's the shield. He's trying to make himself snipe proof. Big economy from TA. 220 mass and 13k power. He's going to try to push up the middle again. Well, this mass is going to be reclaimed by Mackie. I'm not sure who has more air. Mackie with 24. TA. Where is his air? 14. So Mackie definitely has more ASF. And we see a megalith already well into construction for Mackie. Two Tech 3 engineers on that. So he's using the mass that he's reclaimed to make a megalith. And if he does get that megalith, you'd have to say TA would be in big trouble because that megalith could just sit back and attack the Percivals at range before the brick could move in. So that could be a significant part of this game if that megalith gets online. See the monkey lord just using its ranged weapon and now TA might, I would say if the, if the monkey were at normal standard health, this may be an opportunity to snipe it down, but it has 63,000 maximum health, so quite a formidable unit now with its veterancy levels pushing in, and it is faster, so it's going to start catching up with these Percivals and just mow them down. It's up to 67,000 maximum health now. This Monkey Lord will become very, very powerful. And the Megalith is almost done. How much mass was Ma Mackie reclaiming? A lot. This is almost up to 100,000 reclaimed TA just laboring at about 73,000. So once that spider and megalith are both online, it's gonna, it, it might be game over, you know. And TA didn't really do that to be snipe proof. He actually wants to go into battle. True TA style and a big push from Mackie up here. The strap bombers are coming in to do significant splash damage. What a bomb there. More bombs coming in, devastating. Absolutely devastating to those Percivals up there. It's going to be a massive push from Mackie on the top. The spider taking damage. It's going to have to move away. Bricks also in the mix up there. And the Megalith is done. We're seeing a dramatic turnaround for Mackie here. All that mass that TA donated has been turned into some devastating experimentals here. Ravager online for TA. A bit too late. Those strap bombers absolutely turned the tide of the battle up here. More reclaim for Mackie. He can go for another Megalith as he is doing. Imagine his mass banks have no problems. And TA wants to use his battle comm here. I think he could actually take out the Monkey Lord with little problem here. The, the issue for him is that there's so many bricks following it up. 
no way can he just stand there or he'll get raped. And the Percival's here are once again getting sandwiched by Mackey's unit. Bricks on one side and the Megalith on the other side. 46 minutes in and it looks really bad for TA. TA might actually have air control now, but the strap bombers from Mackey don't care. They're just going to go and annihilate the Tech 3 units again. The Monkey Lord is almost dead. It has to retreat as quickly as possible. The strap bombers come in for TA. And somehow the force has been thinned out considerably. But I don't think he has anything to kill this megalith. See, it's devastating firepower against the Percivals. He target fired the Tech 3 factory that would really just put an end to this nonsense. The overcharges continue to come in from TA as he tries to deal with this stuff on top. And he's doing quite well for himself, to be fair. And suddenly, Mackie's Megalith is struggling just a little bit. Once these bricks come in to support, though, he will have no problems. He could actually just walk over these Percivals as he does have the massive attribute on this, uh, this Megalith. I couldn't think of what it was called there. That was a fail. Nuke defense, actually, for TA. And a second megalith, if it wasn't already game over, it really is now. It's going to take something extraordinary for Mackey to not win this game. And it was a good one as well. A lot of momentum shifting again. Looks like it was with Mackey in the early game. Then it somewhat switched to TA. And he just made those pushes and he seemed to just somewhat run out of steam. And the... The good defense for Mackey, especially here with his ACU, and then down here with the, with the spider bot gave him plenty of reclaim, which he turned into a megalith. And for the moment, it looks like that megalith is going to give him victory, although it is getting overcharged by TA. It's trying to retreat. TA is actually coming all the way up here. If he was just target fired, the game would be over. Megalith now target firing him from range. And this will be game, and uh, or maybe not. TA will hide on under the ledge here. He's still taking fire. It's just going to take a little bit longer, you would think. And there goes Strap Bombers to finish it off. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. 50-minute game on Surtis. I know it's the second Surtis in a row. But it was still a good one. And see Soul Ripper almost up for Mackie. He must just have inordinate amounts of reclaim. 145,000 reclaim. It's just been all those Tech 3 battles. TA still has yet to reach a hundred thousand reclaims so that was the difference ta just didn't really kill enough with his tech three forces and out of nowhere mackie just pulled out a win so uh if you guys enjoyed this make sure to like and subscribe make sure to give me good replays because i really did cast this one for lack of other stuff but it turned out to be a good one so um yeah just send me your replays if you want and i'll see you guys later